Good afternoon. So it's the second day of our intensive retreat. There was some reluctance to call it a session because after all, we didn't have the complete formal session atmosphere. But you know what we discovered? This is a, sh this is a session, right? Are you lacking anything? So we are finishing up our second day of Daivasatsu Zendo's 44th anniversary session. And perhaps you wish to continue for another five days. Yes. Even this way, we can do much more than we think. We are so self-limiting as human beings. I can already see the consternation in the great bodhisattvas who have served as hosts and behind the scenes techno technological wizards who have put together a very demanding schedule of all manner of links and I can't even begin to even think about what they've put together here, but we're gonna keep going, right? Whether we can see each other or not, this session energy will infuse the rest of our week and this amazing effort on the part of these inconspicuous bodhisattvas who are making it possible will help us offer at later on in the summer a uh, Hoenji summer session to you all and many, many other opportunities to practice together this way. A few days before we began the seven Daibosatsu Zendo residents listened to a teisho by Eiro Roshi that was given at session that concluded with the formal opening 44 years ago on July 4th, 1976. Edo Roshi was 44 years old. And this morning, we had 44 participants. So those of you who joined later, thank you for staying away so that we could truly enjoy this so-called just happens that way. 44, 44, 44. Ada Roshi often spoke of the uncanny working its magic. The Daibosatsu Mandala manifesting. He said in his introduction to Endless Vow, in this mandala, the esoteric and the exoteric merge. There is no boundary between East and West. Life and death are not two separate, distinct matters. Mm. 
this Gai Bosatsu mandala consists of innumerable Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, and ancestors from both East and West who played a role in the formation of a Dharma phenomenon in the land of liberty. And he continued, there are at least four generations that I can name as part of this mandala. The first generation was that of Soenchaku and Gimpo Roshi. The second includes Nyogen Senzaki, Soen Roshi, Shubin Tanahashi, Chester Carlson, and others mentioned in this narrative. The third, he said, is my generation. The fourth is the current Sangha. That's you. That's all of us in this mandala. Hearing Eido Roshi's voice, leading morning service on the CD played for us these two mornings. It was clear that despite his passing away on February 19th, 2018, he continues his fierce devotion to what we are doing and is right here with us in this mind, which is unlimited, unconditional, unhindered by the restrictions of conventional time and space. So this is what we are experiencing in our digital session. Where is it taking place? Of course, in the temples and homes of our threefold Sangha, composed of Daibosatsu Zendo, New York Zendo, Zen Center of Syracuse, monks and residents, members and friends all over the world. But where is it taking place? Daibosatsu Mountain is here. It is at Beecher Lake. It is in New York City. It is in Syracuse and in Massachusetts, Rhode Island. Florida, Texas, Indiana, Oregon, North Carolina, Michigan, California, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Idaho, and Europe. Did I miss anybody? Okay, I said New York, right? 
New York City, New York State. Let us not forget, there is something beyond Syracuse and New York City. So anyone else? Did I leave anyone else out? I said, I think where Daibusatsu Mountain is located in each of your hearts, right? I see Leora saying, what about Vermont? So these things happen. And please tell me if I have left any other states out because you are all here in your present state of Daibosatsu Mountain. So within the restrictions imposed by the pandemic, we are doing solitary retreat month after month together, mountain top to mountain top together. Within the discipline of our session schedule, sitting without moving during each Zazen period, we are at home, yet always on this endless way. And we are discovering true freedom. Today is Independence Day. Today is Interdependence Day. Last anniversary session, vigorously practicing as we were, we felt great gratitude to Edo Roshi and Soen Roshi for founding Daibosatsu Zendo and for the opportunity to sit together in the beauty of the Zendo and the natural environment. Yet still there was some degree of assumption. Taking for granted, we could always return. With no idea that we would not be able to be at Daibosatsu Zendo for any sessions of 2020. I remember at January's Martin Luther King Jr. session, the last time we were sitting in person together. And I spoke about the urgent need to have 2020 vision for the challenges the year would bring. Oh my. Little did I know that within just the next few weeks, everything would be turned upside down. And that we would find ourselves 
reflecting again and again on the passage in the Heart Sutra. The Bodhisattva relies on prajna paramita with no hindrance in the mind, no hindrance, therefore no fear. Far beyond upside down views, at last nirvana. Now, we are all working on an advanced threefold interrelated intertwined koan the ever spiraling pandemic which is in itself the manifestation of the reality of the climate crisis The huge, determined, all encompassing nationwide and global protests against systemic racism and police brutality. And the worsening worldwide economic disaster, which none of the old approaches seem capable of remediating. Some of you may remember the English nursery rhyme. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. All the experts all the president's men, including some women. No one knows what to do. Nothing works. As Zen practitioners, we are familiar with the double entendre. Nothing works. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing because We've come to the end of the line, brothers and sisters. We must change our ways, as Mother Earth has been telling us for too long. We must drop our privilege and be willing to make the necessary sacrifices and open the door to a new paradigm.
check your door. Is it sealed shut? Are you saying, oh, that's somebody else's concerns, what can I do? Or are you wide open to this amazing moment? You know, the difficulty of our era may seem unprecedented, but of course it's not. Anyone who is at all familiar with history anywhere on this earth knows that. But I was reminded of a sonnet by Edna St. Vincent Millay in her 1954 book, Mind the Harvest. And I can still hear it being recited by her younger sister, Norma Millay, with whom I was very close until her death in 1986. So I will recite it for you. Read history. So learn your place in time and go to sleep. All this was done before. We do it better, fouling every shore. We disinfect, we do not probe the crime. Our engines plunge into the seas, they climb above our atmosphere. We grow not more profound as we approach the ocean's floor. Our flight is lofty. It is not sublime. Yet long ago, this earth by struggling men was scuffed and scraped by mouths that bubbled mud and will be so again and yet again until we trace our poison to its bud and root and there uproot it. Until then, earth will be warmed each winter by man's blood. So our practice is indeed to trace our poison to its bud and root and there uproot it as Hakuin Zenji also said. Never giving up, never slacking off, You know, I'm sure, it took great perseverance and great determination to bring Daivosatsu Zendo into existence. And Edo Roshi was a force of nature.
we found the property in the late winter of 1971. And by spring, thanks to the generosity of two donors and a lot of work, the Zen Studies Society took ownership. And on September 13th, 1972, under gentle raindrops, we held Kai San Shiki, opening the mountain ceremony, during which Edo Roshi addressed the deity of Daibosatsu Mountain, Lake, and Field, and said, On behalf of all the Sangha, I ask your forgiveness for our destruction and pollution of all rocks, trees, grasses, and mosses and the nature of the Catskill Mountains. May this place be peaceful, calm, creative, and harmonious for all the years to come and for all people who may come here generation after generation. And so Roshi offered a formal verse. In this bottomless lake, let us put sun, moon, and all stars on this boundless field. Countless bodhisattvas are being born. So by the following spring, the ground was broken. And in 1974, a small group of us became the first residents living at the Beecher House, holding sessions. And then the following summer, in August, moving into the still unfinished new building. None of this was easy. It sounds as though one thing followed another and just happened, but it took every ounce of our energy inspired continuously by Edo Roshi and Soen Roshi. And in Namu Daibo Sa, the book we put out, Edo Roshi's passage says, Accepting cheerfully the inconveniencing and inconveniences of our pioneering life during those first years, the residents helped smooth the way for the construction of the new Zendo and deepened the spiritual atmosphere of the mountains. I remember that smoothing the way, going out before dawn in the pickup truck that had a cracked windshield, that had no windshield wipers, with sand in the back of the truck and taking turns, throwing sand down on top of the snow and ice 
so that the construction crew could make it up in an hour or so later. Then Itoroshi said, however, due to the effects of worldwide inflation and an unstable economy, the generous gift for the establishment of Daibasatsu Zendo had been almost completely spent by the end of 1974 and the completion of International Daibosatsu Zendo by July 4th, 1976, seemed very uncertain indeed. At the Rohatsu session that year, everyone sat with great intensity, he continued. At that session, we chanted, Kongo Anyarami Kyo, the Diamond Sutra, for the first time in the history of American Zen. Day after day, our diamond chanting, our diamond samadhi, swelled in intensity. By the end of the session, the feeling of uncertainty had gone had been replaced by a feeling of confidence. For during this historical session, all of us had experienced the transmission of Buddha Dharma penetrating into each and every one of us. Now I knew that there could be no other temple name for Daibosatsu Zendo than Kongoji. Kongoji Diamond Temple. So, of course, we know that no matter how difficult things are, we must give our all to the practice. It was the absolute trust in the Dharma and the absolute dedication to Zazen that brought the impossible dream into reality. And this is what has inspired generations of Zen students to come to DBZ, train diligently in transforming the mind from self-absorption to altruism. And these generations are here. Some of you go way back. Zenshin, Richard Rudin, way back, yes? Many, many of you remember those early decades, Hokuto Sensei and others who came perhaps a little later, but have become the bulwark of our Zen Studies Society practice and doing so much to foster it and share it and keep it going so strongly. I think of Geno, all the wonderful ways she has contributed. So many of you just coming to session, 
just sitting, just being present year after year. Eshin joining us for this Zoom session, one of the earliest participants in those days, pioneering days of Zen in America. So I won't mention each of you and the times that I remember with you. Just allow me to say how grateful I am that we did persevere in transformational work. You know that famous line from the Dhammapada, our life is shaped by our mind. We become what we think. Our thoughts result in words, in actions. If the mind is filled with uncertainty, if the mind is wavering, our actions will reflect that and will be wobbly and unstable. If the mind is filled with resentment, what we say and do will reflect that. If it is filled with anger, again, it will reflect that. Filled with selfish attachment and desire, speech and actions will reflect that. We can't escape this. If we are afloat like a cork in the waves, only thing we know, the only thing we can be sure of is suffering. Of course, the waves themselves, no matter how turbulent, are no different from the water in the ocean's depths. But until we experience that, it's just another concept. And without that experience, as Rinzai put it in Hokuto Sensei's talk yesterday, one thought of doubt is the Buddha devil. So not giving any substance to such thoughts, we just continue practicing no matter what. It feels good. Oh, congratulations. It feels terrible. Oh, congratulations. Just keep going. Don't get stuck. No need for pushing or forcing or striving. Just unswervingly returning to this, discovering a deepening of trust in the vastness of this. So we stop concocting and start listening. Nyogen Senzaki put it this way, block the road of your thinking, give the uppercut to your own dualistic desires and ideas. Yes, it takes great determination to change the mind and 
patient forbearance with the impediments and hindrances of the conditioned small self. Don't waste any energy on berating yourself. Just apply yourself continuously to waking up to who, who you truly are. No one else can do it for you. You have participated in these two days of condensed, intensive practice without hesitation, again and again, dropping all projections and expectations, just sitting with pure intention, falling asleep and pinching yourself. Wake up, be your own Keisaku. Entering into this one mind, one breath. Exhaling completely and giving yourselves to that formless threefold refuge of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, that Dokoro Osho spoke so beautifully of before we began. This is the true ground of your being. It is never apart from you. And as you give yourselves away, you are purifying your karma. Now about karma, maybe I'll speak a little bit. I don't know about you, but I have plenty of ancient twisted karma, as one translation holds. Our own, all the harmful karma, or in the old days, all the evil karma. So all this ancient twisted stuff that we are carrying around. We think that karma is our great hindrance and is responsible for our difficult states of mind. But as Yamakawa Roshi once told me, don't hate your delusions, befriend them. And you will discover they are just a phantasm, a mirage a bubble in a stream. So karma is everything, the whole of it. Each of us is here due to our amazing karma. Each of us has come to the Buddha's way because of our karma. 
and each of us is capable of purifying the mind because of a strong motivation of our karma. This is the good news of karma, okay? Realizing this, we can feel compassion for our own struggles and all other beings' hardships and confusion. This compassion is what naturally leads to real substantive transformation. Then practice is perfection itself. We come to the realization that in spite of all these seemingly impossible hindrances, these temporary forms we call ourselves are just drops of water in the vast ocean. We are never separate, never apart from this ocean of dharma. We are swimming in it together, sometimes experiencing it as sweat, sometimes the very summer air so filled with humidity. And we can really feel looking at each other on screen this Zoom session is anything but virtual. This is real. This is why we are here in this human form. And this is what we are freely giving away.